Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Tool to Play presents Still Got Game with Derek D. Smooth Nolan and Joel Duda Rock Albert. This episode of Still Got Game is brought to you by GoDaddy. Hey now, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Still Got Game, episode 38. Still Got Game is the official podcast of Tool2Play.com. I am, as always, Derek D. Smooth Nolan. And I am Joel Dude I Rock Albert. What's going on, Joel Dude I Rock Albert? Not a mooch, just uh, little technical difficulties this week. I would say so. That's a, the so. understatement of the day. It I is, would like uh, to say that our, our green screening, the things that like you would think was the technical di- difficulties, had nothing to do with it. It's just hit. No, that, just, that just worked. It was the that Canadian was just fine. internets. Yeah. It hits Canadian internets like 500 megabits a second, but that's Canadian megabits. Which right. Is like, it's like 28K. Exactly, uh, yeah. Once you do the conversion rate and everything else, it's like practically dial-up. But, <laughs> but we are, uh, we're on now, and we have some... Some green screen action behind us. We're looking pro as fuck. Or, yeah, we're matching. Uh, I love this. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's how we roll. Exactly. Uh, at least we will roll for moving forward from this point. Right. But this is now how we roll. But so sorry for the late start to the show live, people. For those of you that are watching on YouTube or the podcast, you don't give two fucks. But nope. we are starting about 20 minutes late thanks to uh, all these technical difficulties. So we're just going to hammer right into the show proper and bang through this motherfucker. Let's do it. All right, so we'll start off with feedback from last week's show. Remember, if you want to leave us a voicemail, it will cut you off after a minute. Shadow comments. The what the fuck story this week had me saying what the fuck. Maybe it's because I live in Illinois, which is an at will state, which means an employer can let you go at any time for any reason. So I don't get why they would have to pay someone out to let them go. This was from that Riot Games story where... uh, If employees wanted to leave, they hired someone new. If you want to leave in the first 90 days, they would pay you... Uh, 10% of your salary to leave the company. And Jay was like, that's pretty normal where I am here and all the people I know say that's normal. But uh, obviously, not everybody thinks it's normal. Well, I would still say, I mean, even in Illinois, uh, I've seen this happen. So uh, believe it or not, even with these, even even though it is no fault state and they can fire anyone whenever they want, sometimes it's literally, it, it, I, I get that sounds crazy, but it's literally just to get them to leave with no argument whatsoever. It, it's literally just, it's, it's, I, we said it before and I'm, it's almost like I'm being literal. It's kind of like hush money. It's to that level of like, just, just go. It didn't work out, but we made you either, let's say, you know, they moved you from a different position or, you know, let's say you moved from out of state to come into a place. It's sort of like compensation for the, for the work that incurred, even though it didn't work out. You might not even be a bad employee, but it might just be a cultural difference, which is really what Riot's talking about here more than anything. You could be great as a programmer. You could be fantastic. But maybe you just suck as a human being. So this is like, hey, we think you suck. You may, may or may not think we suck. Here's some money. Just go away. No, so. It, it- and that kind of yeah. goes along with uh, what Sarcasmo Jones said in the second comment on this, where he said, yeah, it seems uh, almost more demoralizing. It's like, here, take this money and get the fuck out of my office. They're paying extra to never see you again. <laughs> and that's, that's really totally. what it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, even in a state like Illinois, or there's several other states like that, there can still be uh, issues that arise out of firing someone. So no one ever lo- likes being fired. It's never... Uh, an awesome thing. And so sometimes you get, this is an easier way to just say, Hey, it didn't work out. We understand. Here's some money to help you along the way until you like find your next gig. So it's still not, a, I still don't think it's a bad idea. And I also don't think it's, it's that crazy, but I guess maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm in an industry, which I am same as really riot, uh, where that's going to happen more. Well, frequently, I, I, I'm so. in the tech industry and, yeah. and we don't usually have that, but we also, we, we have a whole bunch of different things that go on, but sure. 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 All right. Well, uh, also the, the last comment on this particular topic, Arcus Maximus comments, dude, I rock was saying that the paying off of people to leave was pretty normal, but I think it's pretty fucked up. Um, well, I didn't say it wasn't fucked up. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying it happens, but it is, it's, it it's one of those fucked up things thing. that you expect to happen. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, like it's, it's fucked, fucked up, up in the sense cool. of like, wow, I can't believe they do this. But when you do really start to think about why they do it, like what it, the benefit of giving them the money to leave to me, at least it makes sense. It, I know it's weird, but, uh, it does make sense to me, believe it or not. All right. So, yeah. 
All right. Well, then uh, Izunia comments, loved last week's episode. I like the change to the gaming news stuff with the newscaster type setup. Well, I'm glad you like that, Azunia, and that will be coming back. But uh, my wife, Tiffany Electrify Nolan, is yeah, she's under the weather tonight. You know, she's not at her, her peak. She's losing her voice and, and she's not congested and all these other problems. So tonight it's just going to be Joel, dude, I rock it, Albert and I. This is like uh, going old school. The, yeah. The, uh, the original motif. But exactly. she will be back to, to read the news so that we can actually take breaks and have a good time. But <laughs> tonight, tonight, what you see is what you get. And That's what we like to do. We like to like start something brand new and then and then just n- we don't do it anymore. We're like, this is going to be every week <laughs> starting in two weeks. Exactly. Yes. Now we've gone two weeks of the show in a row. We're going to skip five weeks and then we'll be back for every week until the next time we skip weeks. But no, that will be coming back probably next week. I would assume I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Uh, and last but not least, Rick rollout comments. You guys are fucking awesome. Oh, that's all. Whenever I see that, I'm just like, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Like, I just, I didn't even know how to comment to this. It's really, I just soak it in. I just rub it on. Nod your head and just, <sighs> I'm like, yeah, that's right. We're fucking awesome. You're kids. welcome. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Rick roll out. Rick roll out. Rick roll out. Rick roll out. I assume you have to say it. Rick roll out. Car ramrod. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You're all right. Well, if any of you feedback, give us a call at 773-527-2961 or email us at podcast at tooltoplay.com. And then site-related news, I don't have anything this week. Jay, what do you got? No, I got nothing this week. Um, it's, you know, same old, same old. Obviously, the thread now on the homepage of, of the changing of Tool to Play has reached uh, some pretty large numbers. I think we have like 67 comments, and I've even been getting more comments even still. So really, uh, if if it's anything about site news, it's really about going there and starting to actually uh, post your comments because the more we get, the better. So yeah. that's it for now. Right, go there, the future of Tools Play, and, and uh, make your comments there. Yep. Uh, now, the, for those of you in the live stream, before we move on, I apologize for this massive bead of sweat that keeps forming on my head. It is probably 90, 95 degrees down here since I turned off the, the fans. I have literally 11 lights lighting me to make this green screen work. So <laughs> it is. Holy shit. If I, uh, if I pass out, someone please call some authorities somewhere. But Stay that's cool, why I'm drinking, Stay that's cool. why I'm drinking, drinking alcohol. That's what they recommend yeah. when you're getting dehydrated, right? right? <laughs> yes. Exactly. Really yeah. hydrates the body, except for that it doesn't yes. do that at all. Yes. All right. Well, Jay, on that, why don't we hop on over into what we're playing? Joel, dude, I rock Albert. What have you been playing this week? Well, I'm still playing Wildstar, obviously. Uh, I'm got into the end game now, so I'm sorting oh, nice. through that. Yeah, we're, I'm about to see if I like the game. So if anyone's ever played an MMO before, you know that you level, which is like the eh part. And then once you get to end game, you can actually find out if there's enough content there to keep you transfixed and really decide whether or not you want to spend the X amount of dollars per month it is uh, to subscribe to the game. So I'm at max level now, started doing some dungeons and stuff like that. It's pretty fun playing with some old tool to play folks uh, from a former guild and uh, a couple other guys from outside of the site itself. So it's been fun so far, though. I can't complain. Right. It's been good. Nice what about you? What are you playing? Well, like I always play in Titanfall. I am uh, I'm at the very end of Gen 9 now. I have, I think, like three challenges left. So I should be done probably maybe after the show tonight or tomorrow. And then it's on to Gen 10 and then I'm done. And then I can get back to Wildstar and start leveling up and doing the, the uh, part. And then eventually get on to the good stuff. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but I am on your server and in your, your faction. So uh, I haven't even invited you into the guild yet. No, you're an asshole. Yeah, that's that why. Sense. But also, I didn't. T- I didn't. I didn't tell you I was there. Right. Which, that's the other part. Of the problem. <laughs> in, in your defense, that yeah. is probably why that has not occurred. But sure, sure. Yeah, I'll do some wild star. And, and the other thing I played this week is sixty second shooter prime, and this is five bucks on uh, Xbox One's uh, indie games or whatever. It is. It is the spiritual successor to Geometry Wars, and it's not just oh, the pa- It's not just the pacifism mode. It's. It's a little bit of everything. Basically, each game can last a maximum of 60 seconds. And uh, so you start on level one, and you can either shoot the guy. It's a twin-stick shooter, so you can either shoot the guys and fly around, pick up power-ups, or 
there's little portals on each level that take you up to the next level. And so you can either, uh, basically the higher level you are, the more points things are worth on the higher level. So basically what you do is you fly around, pick up the power-ups, jam up to the next level, jam up to the next level, power-ups, jam up to the next level. And uh, it's, a, it's a game of finesse and, and you, literally the longest your game could last is 60 seconds. So it's a lot of fun and uh, it definitely, for those of you that love Geometry Wars, for five bucks you cannot fucking go wrong with this. And uh, it's a good time. It's I hope to much. increase my scores. Like I look at my friends list and I, I just started playing yesterday, but it, some of my fr- like, I, I think I'm at 14,000 and I have friends that are like 1.9 million, 1.8 million. So I, there, there's definitely something to, uh, to pick up and learn here, but wow. super fun. And it, if you love geometry wars, this is definitely for you. Good deal. Yeah. All right, Jay. Well on that, why don't we hop on over to the new releases? First new release out this week is a multi-platform release, and it is Sniper Elite 3. And this is out for the Xbox One, the PS4, the 360, the PS3, and the PC. This is Rebellion's third entry into the Sniper Elite series. Uh, And like the previous entries, it's also set in World War II. Now, this takes place in some African campaign in World War II that none of us are familiar with, but I guess it was really interesting, and that's why they picked this. Uh, It's a sniping game obviously based on the name, with its fair share of stealth takedown. So basically, you're either sniping from afar or you're kind of working your way in and do that neck crack or the stabby stabs. Either way, good times. Uh, the game looks fantastic. And they've actually improved on the uh, whatever the Sniper Elite 2 was called. Uh, so basically what happens is you snipe and then you get this kill cam. And in Sniper Elite 2, you would see the kill cam and they would do this kind of cutaway cross section of the body in uh, like a skeleton and it would show like the bones cracking and everything else. Well, because now there's all these next gen consoles now on the 360 and the PS3, you don't get this. You just get the the shitty shits, but on the next gen shit and the PC, when that bullet get, when you get your kill cam after the shot, not only do you see the skeleton, but you see like the musculature and the, uh, the circulatory system of the body and the bullet and what happens with it, all that physics is defined and calculated on the fly. So you literally see like the creepiest shit ever. Like, you, you know, your shot comes in the top of the head and you see it like penetrate the skull and then bounce around the brain and it severs this artery and blood's coming out. It, it's actually really cool. And they actually did that also with the vehicle kill cam. So like if you're a sniper and you have like that heavy duty sniper rifle and you're taking out somebody's truck or whatever and you aim at the front of the truck and you're trying to take out the engine block, when the bullet comes in and you see on your kill cam, all of a sudden you see a cutaway of the engine and you see like all the pistons and all that shit and the same thing happens. So they've really, they've done it up and they kind of make you feel like you're getting uh, some value for the damage you're doing. Um, There's a new XP leveling system in the game based on the length and difficulty uh, of your shots, any traps that you use to to kind of snare guys in and and bring them over to where you're going to snipe them, all that uh, impacts the amount of XP you get per kill, and you level up. And as you level up, obviously you get more equipment, more uh, abilities, and everything else, just like all these other games. Uh, it also features co-op play and a bunch of multiplayer modes. It's definitely not my kind of game. Any game that could possibly require some sort of stealth component is yeah. not for me, but. You know what? It it looks great, and if you like this kind of game, or if you played the previous two, this one is leaps and bounds above uh, what you played before. Any interest in this, Jay? No, not at all. It's one of the, again. I'm kind of the same way. If it's not like really action based, believe it or not, even in like FPS is where I where you know the sniper because sometimes is really powerful. With the exception of Halo, I generally don't like it. I, Halo for some reason because the sniper can kind of be used in close quarters combat as well. Uh, especially when you would, you know, snipe one shot and then and fist at the end. That combo of things made the sniper more interesting, but most games I tend to actually stay away from the sniper. Even in Call of Duty when people were doing, you know, no-scope hip shots and stuff like that, it just yeah. doesn't, that type of gameplay, even if it's more powerful, I tend to just steer away from it. I don't, I feel like the skill level, the skill gap is, is not very, I like a high skill gap, you know, when I master yeah. a weapon and, and can kick ass from long range or short range, it's fun. But yeah, usually, nice sniper, bit. I tend to stay away. Really, so yeah. Well, that, that was the beauty of Titanfall for me is that as going through all these generations, it forces you to become the master of all the weapons. And there, uh, to get to this ninth generation, I in the I had to use the sniper rifle and kick ass with it. And 
I ended up actually becoming really good with like a, a super slow bolt action sniper. And it was, uh, it was good for me. I, I'm sure at some point that'll come into play and I'll have all kinds of loadouts and I'll have a snipe loadout if I need one. And, you know, it builds up the skill set. I'm with that. I'm with that. All right, Jay. Well, on that, why don't we hop on over into gaming news? And now you do not get your break this week because you're going to be doing some reading. First story! All right, with the first story, of course, Xbox One is going to support Xbox One gameplay clips and achievements. I'm sorry, Xbox.com. Uh, this is via joystick. So an upcoming Xbox.com update should make being away from your Xbox One a little more bearable, as if uh, that was already tough in the first place. Starting next week, you can use the site to actually check out your Xbox One data in the form of player activity, uh, achievements, and gameplay clips. So that's kind of cool if you want to go check out other people's stuff and you're at work and you're bored. You can do that now. Whether it's a personal profile of, or, of course, the profile of your friends, users will be able to scroll through and play game clips on a, a general profile or pull up a user's entire library of clips to look through. So if Derek calls me and says, I just pwned some noobs, I know you're at work, but check it out. I can finally do that, uh, is, uh, although I don't know if I ever wanted to do that in the first place, but I can now. <laughs> there you go. It's good stuff. Comparing achievements will function similarly to how it works on the Xbox 360 records. Um... I'm sorry, with records, through drilling down to a game-specific achievement list, and it will let users grab a large version uh, of any achievement's artwork. So that's kind of cool. Major Nelson describes the impending update as, quote, the beginning of a number of community-requested features on Xbox.com, end quote, with more news coming, of course, this summer and fall. Considering this update reflects the highest voted request on the Xbox forums, it actually sounds like a rallying support for this feature or for the features you'd most likely want to see isn't necessarily a waste of time. So this is a good thing, uh, whether you're into this feature or not, at least it feels like they're actually communicating and listening to the users. So, I mean, what do you, I mean, I don't know if you specifically wanted something like this, well, but I, as a I, whole, what do you think? I want an Xbox account to be updated since the Xbox one came out. It, yeah. there, was, there was this whole like lack of sync and lack of synergy between the two. Like, you would see your friends are playing on this and you would go to the xbox.com and you can only see the 360 friends. And then you couldn't compare achievements with friends and everything. So this is like a huge step in the right direction for yeah. Microsoft. And hopefully this is where it keeps going. And, you know, I, I, they, there's still a, a whole bunch of shortcomings that need to be addressed. Like the, the pre-ordering of games, the, the pre-downloading of games on yes. launch day. Um, other xbox.com enhancements but at least it shows that somebody's listening and from what the this news story says that was the number one feature that people requested on on the xbox.com support forums and microsoft listed that's the first thing they implemented so you want something go there champion it get your friends involved you know hop on tools play get the community riled up get them in there too have them champion it and maybe get you, uh, get what you want because this is a it appears to be the way that you push things through the system but Hopefully this is a sign of things to come and they're just going to keep pushing on and on and on with new features. But uh, I'm a huge fan of this and I'm glad it's finally here. Yeah. I mean, for me, when it comes to the web, especially, usually iteration is really easy to do on a website when you're tying features together. They've got a very good API already where people can sort of connect and pull achievements down through third-party sources and stuff. So I would really like to see them kind of get off their butts and have more of that right on Xbox.com. It feels really, really lame right now. This is a good step forward, but it's it's something that I've always really wanted to see is sort of more user interaction and things I can do yep. on the web when I'm away from my system. I, I like that kind of stuff, so... Yeah. Let's let's hope we see some more in the future. Yeah. And hopefully they'll bring back the uh the XML feeds for community yes. developers. Like I was in that community developer program early on and we did all kinds of cool stuff on Tool to Play for the 360 at that point. Yeah. And that stuff has disappeared from Xbox One. But you know, once it comes back, maybe we can start incorporating some of that stuff back and and help drive community, make it easier to figure out who's playing right. what game that you want to play. And oh, they're on your console and they're playing this game. And yeah. It, it just makes everything so much easier. So yeah, I mean, what I would always wanted to see, and which, and I, we're probably going to go off a little bit of a tangent, but what I really would wish they would do is allow me to to know through my own API request for, for me to like go in and see what all the members of Tool to Play are playing, so I can say, hey, look, yes. Hitman just went live with this specific game. Do you yep. want to play with Hitman? And right there on the website, I'm on Tool to Play. I know what members are currently playing games right yep. now. So when we have events, you could see these events happening in real time. 
And they have the tech to do it. It just isn't there. But it it's, seems like a no-brainer way to get people connected. Just, just give it back to us. Give, give it, it to back. us. That's all we yes. want. All, All right. right. Next story. Next story. We're going back to a Destiny, if you will. <laughs> Destiny to be the biggest game of the year? Question mark. This is via Gama Sutra. According to a new report published by VentureBeat, Cohen and Company's analyst Doug Cruitz has projected Destiny the, to be the best-selling game of 2014, giving it chances of selling 10 to 15 million copies and pulling in ref- roughly 600 million to 900 million at retail. Uh, inclu- inclusive of marketing, Activision is spending 500 million on the Bungie developed game, which it is releasing for the PlayStation 3, boo, PlayStation 4, yay, Xbox 360, boo, and Xbox One, yay. CEO Bobby Kotick has called the game, quote, the biggest new IP in our company's history and has also christened it quote, Activision, Activision Publishing's next billion-dollar franchise, unquote. No Them pressure there. Some big words, <laughs> mofos. Uh, Kruitz said that the game has the highest score in its odor meter. I don't know what that's No, called. it's an odometer. Odometer, I'm sorry. Oh, odor meter is so much better. Uh, <laughs> in which, it smells. Right? It's like, does, it, does it smell shitty? I don't know. Uh, in which he tracks the popularity of upcoming games. In the last four years, meaning it could outsell even the next iteration of Activision's, of course, Call of Duty franchise. So I have some thoughts on this. But so what do you think about these projections? Well, the number that always sticks out, and Bungie is, has kicked back and they're like, well, you know, we, we don't know about this $500 million number. We're just going to keep rolling and do our thing. But it, it doesn't surprise me that Activision kicked between what, what they actually spent on it and all the marketing behind this, 500 million is probably a lot of money to spend. But if this yeah. thing sells 10 to 15 million copies and nets between 600,000 and almost a billion dollars, it is in the Call of Duty territory on your very first fucking game. It yeah. is exceeding the Call of Duty numbers because now you start cannibalizing that market. Like, right. are, are you a Call of Duty guy? Out. Or are you, are you a Destiny guy? So this is, uh, I think this is awesome news. And from what we all play with, uh, played in the game, we all loved it. Everybody that, that has, has tried the alpha that I know that I talked to, er, positive experiences all around. So that really the question is, what platform are you going to end up picking it up on? And, uh, and that, that's the more difficult question. It's not... Are you going to buy it? It's where are you going to buy it? And I guess that that's where your friends are. Like talking to my cheap ass gamer friends, all those guys are picking up on the PS4 because they have some sort of misconceived notion that the game is going to be better on the PS4 because you get this exclusive, like one exclusive raid and all this other stuff. I, I don't know if that's the way to judge the game, but um, either way, it's going to be selling across all these platforms and. You know, when, once you total all those up, if, if you end up netting almost a billion dollars, that is a, a winner in everybody's book. Well, I have to say I hate news stories like this. My problem with this is it's – and every time I see this, I, it's almost like you're cursing the game before it ever comes out. So whenever I see like these wild predictions and when they take over hyping to like the next level – in fact, Deep in Chat said the exact words that were coming in my head, which was overhype – uh, Destiny's a phenomenal game. I loved the alpha. I loved everything about it. But I almost just want to be like, dude, just shut up. Like, just let it be a game first. Because don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Like, people are getting, people have these attitudes, especially with video games. We're such fickle sons of bitches when it comes to games. They see stuff like this and they're like, I don't want to buy that. Everyone buys that game. It's like, whatever. It's like another Call of Duty. It's like everyone's got it. No one likes it, blah, blah, blah. So, like, I see stuff like this. And while I think it's awesome to make a prediction, uh, and, and I don't necessarily think he's going to be wrong. Uh, it just, I can't stand these news stories like this. It's like, just let it be a game. Let's see how great it is. And we'll judge from there. All we've seen is a small tenth of what the game is supposed to be. Will that carry through and get you playing for long periods of time? That we don't know yet. Are you going to play for six months? Don't know. It's possible. Uh, I'm gonna but they the still have to prove that. I, that. That's right. That's where we like agree. Will we buy it and play the shit out of it? Yes. Steve. Exactly. Yes. All right. Good stuff. Next story. EA CEO on lessons learned from mobile dungeon keeper. This is via joystick with dungeon keepers, frequent ultimatum of giving into microtransactions or waiting hours to make another move. 
EA's mobile rival uh, of the evil layer builder didn't win over many fans new or old. Oh, well, got a different frame here. Look at me. Oops. What happens? Get shit. Uh, oh. I'm not prepared. All right, I'm sick with Destiny. Anyway, its reputation <laughs> as one of the least player-friendly examples of free-to-play gaming was rampant closer to its launch, and discontent was widespread enough for EA CEO Andrew Wilson to hear about it. Finally, everyone upstairs is listening, apparently. Speaking with Eurogamer about the mobile successor, Wilson described the situation as a, quote, shame, and said EA had, quote, misjudged the economy, which is kind of bullshit. Um, turns out when you nickel and dime someone, they can only go so far and then they start to they turn say, fuck you. you. Yeah. They're just like, okay, we just won't play your game. Uh, Wilson outlined two overarching types of feedback that EA received from the situation, staying as true as possible to a, uh, revived series essence rather than purely going for new players is important. And that quote, when you're thinking about any business model, premium subscription, free to play value has to exist. Whether it's a dollar, 10, 100, 1,000, you have to deliver value. And always err on the side of delivering more value and not less, which is ironic coming from them because it always feels it's always like seems it's like, the opposite. Yeah, so, it does. Every time. Every single time. Uh, achieving that sense of value can be tough, particularly in a series like Battlefield that offers purchasable content in season passes and deluxe editions on top of, of course, that $60 base price. So... This story, I don't, for me, it's like, I feel like I'm hearing same old, same old. They obviously are aware they're nickel and diming consumers. I don't think they're like, they feel like they've judged the market wrong. I feel like this is like, they know how far can we push a consumer. So for me, when I read a story like this, I'm just like, uh, it's just like, okay. I, I don't even believe you. This is ridiculous, whatever. Well, I see, I, how do you feel? I, I feel like this time, it, the there was enough of a backlash that somebody, and and it ended up being Andrew Wilson, who... Everybody like he when he came in as the CEO, people had such high hopes for him. And for him coming out and admitting, hey, you know what? We may have fucked you guys on this one. Like we sold you this thing, and then we the, you could not even play the game without paying us. Like that is a huge admission from a CEO. And it's like, well, maybe you know, we don't really completely get this free-to-play market, and we have to make some adjustments. Right. And you know what? That that's it's okay because nobody gets that market and everybody has some things to do. Like even the MMO market, that's not a free to play market. They change their business models all the time. They're like, okay, oh, yeah. let's do this. Let's do this. All right, let's lower this price. Let's give you this. It, it, it's a, it's a, a moving target and it's not something that's easy to hit. So at least they're showing that they understand that the, the economy of uh, the market did not meet what they thought and they fucked up and, Admitting that is the first step. It's like one of those 12 step programs. Like the first thing to do is admit you have a problem. Well, they have a problem and they hopefully we don't see an another one like this after this. But, but just like an alcoholic to use that, that example, they're also, it feels like they're just lying as well. Like it also feels like they know they're well aware they've been drinking. They're trying to hide the drink and now they've been caught and they're like, no, we weren't really drinking. That was, I only had a little bit of scotch at the holiday party. I think really EA is blatantly aware of it. Finally enough people bitched. They're going to pretend to like say, oh no, we listened to you for this one particular game. We're going to make some changes. We get that. But then they're just going to go right ahead and keep doing the same thing. They do. And that's possible too. You yeah. I mean, we just, we haven't seen this actually like play itself out in any case so far where EA seems to like give you great value out of a game. You know? until, until the next free to play title launches and we see what the lessons learned are and if they've applied them, well, then then we can make the judgment. call. Right. And I'm sure that the whole gaming industry is waiting on this, too. So this will be a news story once their next one launches. Yes. All right. All right. Next story. And we've talked about this before. It's coming back again and it's getting bigger than ever before. The Dota 2 international prize pool has shot past 10 million Dollars. That's for playing video oh, games, people. Holy That's shit. to play video games. Holy That's what that shit. is. In your boxers, drinking soda, having a beer, playing a video game. Ten million. Via Polygon, the international Valve's worldwide Dota 2 championship tournament now sits on a prize pool totaling more than ten thousand dollars. And this is thanks to oh, the two thousand thousand. Oh, ten million. I'm sorry, Jesus. I don't want to fuck that up. Ten million. Let me say it again. Ten million. All right. Several zeros. Uh, this is thanks to the 2014 compendium sales. 
And now this is what is even more interesting is what the compendium sales are. Valve opened up sales of the official digital program for the International 2014 Championships in May for 10 bucks, where two point or two dollars and fifty cents, let's keep it keep it simple, of every sale was contributed to the prize pool. So just to even try to put that in perspective, ten million dollars, only two dollars and fifty cents of the sales actually went to the prize pool, which is fucking amazing. So a lot of people, a lot of people put in money. Not a lot of money from a couple people, a lot of people, a lot of money. Funds from the sale grew to the tournament's pot of 1.6 million set by Valve to 4 million within a week. So Valve donated the 1.6, the rest was all people. In contrast, the Compendium contributors helped raise last year's international prize pool to a total total of 2.8 million. So they've surged unbelievably since one year. In the first in, week. In first week, they <laughs> shit on records. Shit on them. In-game, rec- uh, in-game rewards unlocked for the Compendium owners and Dota 2 players as, a, as the rapidly occurring funds hit stretch goals. So they got all this cool other shit that got unlocked as they beat out stretch goals. So for instance, the $4 million and $5 million stretch goals unlocked a mini Pudge uh, courier and new matchmaking respectively. So they got some cool features, some unlocks in the game. This is an amazing way to drive players to fund tournaments. This is awesome. Yep. New goals were added when it surpassed $6 million, uh, and Mark and marked uh, exhausted milestones. The latest fundraising achievement will introduce the victory prediction taunt. So you get a kind of an ability. Oh, that sounds awesome. Through the that's, game. Like, that's like, we're pretty sure you're going to win, so you can start taunting the other team. Like, Fuck it's, re- it's really awesome. <laughs> it's just cool shit. Uh, of course, more details about the compendium, um, which allows fans to keep up to date with competitors, matches, and its fundraising stretch goals are outlined on the international's official site. So go there and check it out if you just want to see if you even if you're interested in video games, not necessarily Dota 2 or MOBAs in general. Uh that's just cool to see like how they made all this stuff happen. Uh the tournament's sold out finals are slated for July 18th through the 21st. And I suggest everyone watches this just because it's super interesting and supports video games at the key arena in Seattle. Uh Alliance beat Natas Vinciri in Syria, I'm assuming, uh, in last year's finals to win more than $1.4 million in prize money. Of course, now this year, that will be $10 million. What do you think, Darren? Holy shit. This is it's awesome. Th- this is insane. Like, yeah, they have somehow found the way now to to entice people to fund these prize pools because everybody's getting some value from this. Yeah. He- they don't have the deep pockets just say, okay, let's reach back here and fill the prize pool. Like it doesn't work that way. You, you need to, to somehow have some sort of supplementary income to be like, we're not affecting our usual income chain. This is a separate stream of income that we're going to fund this prize pool with. And they have managed to give just enough, like this little thing for you, this little thing for you. And it's enough to entice people to give their $10 and for, for from that $10, $2.50 goes to the prize pool. They rack in $7.50, which amounts to total bullshit in the game, but people still want it. And uh, it's win-win for everybody. But th- to have a $10 million prize pool in a video game is, you know, if you, to- if you told me when I was a kid and I was playing my first fucking video games that someday there'd be a $10 million prize pool to play a video game, I I would never have fucking believed. It's like you saw Fred Savage in in that fucking movie. Right. He puts on the power glove and yeah. he's like, "I'm going to make ten million. No, he's yeah. making no. Like he was making ten bucks. Grand. I'm yeah. making ten bucks. It's like, oh my god, I'm gonna make enough to like pay for the power glove that I just put <laughs> yeah. on. Because back then a power glove was like three hundred bucks. He was just like, hoping to pay for the power glove. He's that was like, it. oh, I'm breaking even on this shit. Yeah. <laughs> But now ten fucking million dollars. Holy fucking shit! This is yeah. insane. And for me, um, it's, it's it's important on so many levels. I can't. I could almost like. Sp- I, here's the thing. I don't care about Dota two. I don't play mobas very often. Sometimes League of Legends for fun. I suck at them. However, this is good for everything. For in every single way, the company doesn't have to put up the money. It also makes you more involved in the game that you already love to play. Now you're trying to get good at the game. You know that you're going to spend money on something that you're going to watch professionals then play. They're going to win tons of money. It feeds back in the community. You get unlocks. The whole idea of this, this is the way it should be. And I can't think of any other. I mean, you, if you ask me what's the best way to do this, I would never be able to come up with something this awesome. Uh, because it's just so well thought out and the way it's done for the entire community and how they can react to something like this is just, it's awesome. 
I mean, yeah. it really is. I don't know. So, I'm uh, smooth. What do you think about this story? Jay, this story has me saying, what the fuck? And on that, let's hop on over to the mailbag and voicemails. Altius asks, there's been a lot of talk lately about unionizing the video game industry. What are your thoughts on this? Now, uh, there have been uh, a lot of chatter about this. And I think a lot of it comes from these developers that have been part of commun- uh, a de- of develop commu- uh, development communities that, you know, they, they're brought in to build a game. They have this huge development house. The, the game launches, and then a week after, they, they ditch 90, 95% of that workforce, and they keep guys on for bug fixes and everything else. And it, from my point of view, I've, I've never understood unions, and I've never really... It, it's not my thing. I don't work in an industry with unions. And it always seemed like this layer of bureaucracy and bullshit and everything else. But I can see that there are industries that need it, like the, uh, the Film Actors Guild. The movie people need a union behind them. Otherwise, they don't get benefits. They don't get all this other stuff. And I feel like video game people get fucked over all the time. They're, they're treated like a, like a body commodity versus an employee. So I, I, I don't know. I can see the argument, I, and I don't know if it needs to be unions or there needs to be some sort of contract when people are hired. I, w- I would prefer contracts over unions, but, you know, yeah, I, but- I, it, it just, it, it, these people get fucked over so hard every time. <clears throat> like, they, they ramp up a company to, to launch a game, and then they instantly downsize 90, 95% of that. And so I, I just don't, I don't understand why people are still in this industry. Like, if, hey, anyone out there, here's your, uh, you know, a little tidbit of advice. If you're a fucking computer savvy guy, don't go in the video games. Industry. Oh God, go, no. Go in something else. Go, go to, go to your Cisco systems. Go to yes. your, any other big major networking company. They will pay you a shitload of money and you don't have any fucking job risks. Okay. Just go do that instead. I know video games are cool. L- launch a website on the side, hang out with your buddy, do video game stuff, do a show every week, but I'll get paid for that. But get paid real money for the, on the other side of things. Don't go like as cool as it sounds to work in video games. Oh, it's rough. Your job is at risk every fucking every day. Week. Your yeah. job's at risk every day, and you make less than pretty much anyone else that's outside of your sector doing what you do. Yeah, I, I, I hate saying this because like me and Derek have talked about it for a while. Like, oh, what if we could what if we could quit our jobs and get into gaming? Well, we would have to be worried all the time if we were gonna like keep our jobs and we'd have to take massive pay cuts in order to do so. And it's really sad to think of it that way, but that is the way it is. That's the reality of gaming. Now, of course you could become famous inside of gaming. You could become a huge producer of games and stuff like that and really open your own studios, close your own studios, do do what these guys do. But that's the highest echelon. That is the one percenters of gaming. That's a hard position to get to. And that's a lot of incurred risk that you have to take to get there and a shit ton of hard work. Um, so on the union tip, getting into the actual union side of things, there are several issues there, uh, which we could probably end up having a political debate about. But of course, you know, if we're going to go the union route, then you can sort of get into that shady area, uh, where unions benefit certain workers that are already within the union, which makes anyone outside the union and really hard to get inside and actually get jobs. And so you get this sort of cronyism thing that you see in unions, especially sometimes in the United States, where you've got people picking certain people or having contracts with certain unions. So like if I want the best game to be made and I'm a developer and I'm a big guy that's going to like want to hire out, I'm not allowed to hire contractors, even if those contractors are more qualified to build my game because I'm stuck with the fucking unions. It's a union so, shop here. We got to hire exactly. these Exactly. Is, that is a very, very slippery slope. I am not, I mean, I'm sure there's a prep, probably a lot of union people that want to kill me by saying that. I understand that. I understand the value of unions, especially like Derek said, you know, they always are fighting for the correct wages. Everyone's supposed to get X amount of health insurance and all those great things that come with unions. Uh, but I think you'd see a lot of stifling of creativity uh, if you actually had unions as well. There's a reason these games get made the way they do. That's because they don't give a fuck. They'll hire 800 million contractors. And then when they're done with the game, they'll cut them all and they'll keep five. That's yep. It's sick to say that, but that's why it works so well. So great question, by the way. I love this question, but uh, yeah. it's a tough one. Yeah, if you do that, it's it's a culture of body cutting. It's like bring everybody in, get our product out, cut the dead weight, keep the bare minimum. So right. 
it, I can see why you would want that protection, but get that protection in the form of contracts. And then that way you don't, if everybody that's going to go work for a game company, if you all go in with the expectation, I'm going to have some kind of contract that protects my employment. That's the better way to do this instead of trying this collective bargaining and all the union stuff, because it's never going to fly here because there's, there's just such a skill set. There's a huge breadth of people that just want to get in the industry and they don't care how much they get paid. And that's really the problem where there's guys coming out of college. They're like, you know what? I just came out of college where I made no money. I can, I can work five years for no money just to be cool and be in the game industry. So you know, I, I just don't know. It, it's, it's, it, you're right, Jay. It's a huge political debate. We probably don't want to dip into it, but <laughs> no, no, we, we probably already upset nah. a bunch of people. And I'm, yes. the thing is too, I'm not, I'm not either for or against unions in a general term because I do think they work uh, as well. So it's the, the issue really is would, a, would unionizing the, the games industry work? I, I don't think it would. I think it would just put up too many roadblocks to actually get games out. And I think the consumer would actually suffer for it. Yep. And so if, if, you're, if I'm looking at it as a consumer, someone that buys video games every day, to me, probably not the best industry to have a union in. Having said that, it fucking sucks to be in this industry as an actual programmer or person that's making games. It sucks. It's rough. Agreed. Shit's rough. Yep. Agreed. All right. Well, great question, Altius. That was, that was awesome. It's the kind of thing yeah. that you know, it makes you kind of dig at your brain and say, hey, you Does. know what? Oh, I, I don't know. I could see it this way. I could see it this way. Like, it, it really gets you thinking. So great job, Altius. Uh, if any of you have feedback, give us a call, 773-527-2961. Email us at podcast at tool to play .com. You can also comment in this episode's thread on the Tool to Play homepage. And sponsors! Remember, by supporting our sponsors, you help to support Still Got Game. GoDaddy, starting at less than $5 a month. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99% uptime, 24 by 7 support, and free access to the GoDaddy hosting connection. That's the place to quickly install over 50 applications like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Ear, OS, Commerce, and more. Go to toolplay.com slash GoDaddy for great deals on new.com registrations and renewals starting at just $1.99. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Wow. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. And if you'd like to sponsor us, you know, 773-527-2961, email us, podcast at toolplay.com. Tell us what you want to sell. We'll tell you if you're going to pay. We'll sell it. You pay us. Boom. Done. And Twitter us up. You can find everything tool to play related at Twitter.com slash tool to play. Everything podcast related at Twitter.com slash still underscore got underscore game. I, king of the fucking internet, a god of everything that's fucking holy, at twitter.com slash Derek Nolan. And of course, you can find me at twitter.com slash dude I rock. Facebook the fuck out of us. Facebook.com slash tool to play. Facebook.com slash Derek Nolan. Facebook.com slash dude I rock. We also have this little thing called a YouTube channel. All the video content of tool to play ends up getting curated and put into little playlists on the uh, tool to play YouTube page. That's at youtube.com slash tool to play. Go there, subscribe, and you'll be notified via either email or on your iDevice or whatever that there's new tool to play content for you. And, and whether that's still got game, the uh, most prolific show on the tool to play channel, whether it's thick and thin with LB and duty, which co comes out like twice a year, or it's hits motherfucking quit hit motherfucking hit shit 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 that's his show. And uh, basically, that show comes out every time there's a new game. And Hit will go on there, and he will show you that shit live starting at midnight. Well, he'll get the game at midnight, and you'll start seeing his coverage of it at like 2, 3 in the morning because he has to spend a little special time with the game, caress it. Mm, make him touchy good. time. Yeah, like he, he, he can't just like blow his load right away. So, you know what? But that is a great show. Hit's motherfucking quit hit, motherfucking hit, quick hit. And hit hit tits hit really does that show up he really puts his heart and soul into it and uh that too will be on the tool to play youtube channel so go there youtube.com slash tool to play subscribe and you'll be notified of all of our great content uh, also we have a tool to play app it's uh on the itunes app store the real app store you can go there and get it for free it's on all of the android you know kamikaze app stores where you can go in there and get apps or viruses or whatever else 
But we are on there and we are virus free. So ignore all the nice. viruses. Yeah, just push the viruses aside. Come on in the Tool to Play app. And uh, that too will bring you to all of the Tool to Play content that you love, whether it's all the video content we just talked about from the YouTube channel, whether it's all the news stories on the Tool to Play homepage. It doesn't matter. The app will bring them all to you. And if you have feedback on that app, please let us know admin at tooltoplay.com or just comment on this, you know, the podcast thread or whatever else. Let us know because it's a work in progress. We're trying to make that the very best possible experience for all of our listeners. Also, please rate and review this podcast in iTunes. You know, we need five-star reviews. We need, like, decent... Somebody just type up something. Like, be like, these guys are fucking awesome. I love this show. It's the greatest thing. Because every time... A lot of times when shows rename themselves, they just rename their RSS feed in iTunes, and they keep their same reviews and keep everything else. We did a different approach where we were idiots, (laughs) <laughs> and we, <laughs> and twice we've now well, yeah. done, once we've an idiot, the, and then we're like oh that was a bad bad idea let's do that again let's see right. if it works better the second yeah. time right. so we completely scrapped the old shit so the old two shows are in, in in itunes and they still sit there with their reviews but this show needs reviews in itunes so please if you're an itunes listener open up itunes search up still got game go there give us the five star review and write a little something nice be like hey these guys are bros or better than cancer or just whatever you want to put like it can be as good or as semi good as you want it can't be bad but it definitely needs to be five stars because that's really what helps us push up the echelon and then other people discover the podcast that way and it works out well for everybody and then we'll give you better prizes because we haven't given you prizes in four weeks because nobody's written reviews so but you know what yeah exactly write some reviews give us five stars and we'll start giving away some shit right jay goddamn straight all right well, the last place we need to follow you to follow us is on twitch.tv slash tool to play. Go there, follow us there, because that is where all of our live content comes. Every week we do this show there. Eventually, the other tool to play web shows will come back and they'll do their shows there. Also, there's a lot of gameplay that goes on there. And uh, our, our producer, producer extraordinaire, if you will, Hitman, he pumps out content week after week after week. He's just like, Hey, you know what? I'm playing this game. I'm going to put it out there. I think he fucking played old school Halo 2 in the Xbox 360 this week, or maybe even did, on the did original. You? Did he? I, I, I saw it pop up. It was, it was insane. I didn't even know that people were still playing that. But he put it out there. He busted that shit out. And, uh, yeah. If you want content, this is the place to go. And you want live content from people, not like, that little whiny kid that's like, hey, hey, I'm on YouTube and this is my channel and I'm going to fucking kick ass in this game. And I would appreciate if all you subs, every sub, if you come see me, I'll give you a handy. No, that's not what people want. People want, you know, you sub, you, you view the channel and you're like, hey, good games, bro. I like watching your channel. It entertained me for the night instead of shitty TV. And that's all that people ask for. So please twitch.tv to, uh, slash tool to play subscribe there and it's a good time you will always have either original tool to play programming or gaming via any of the tool to play uh gaming celebrities like hitman that uh, show up there uh, last but not least i want to remind you all join us each and every monday night 10 p.m eastern oh my god so fucking late 7 p.m pacific oh my god so early for him uh, twitch.tv slash tool to play still got game is live every week and you can jump in the chat room you can join us have a good time partake in the chat and uh you know it's always good for you it's it, it is a community within a community and uh, like i said last week eventually that chat right now we try to uh, as i'm talking jay tries to work the chat as jay's talking i try to work the chat but at some point, we're going to have a secondary audio channel where the chat is basically read to us and we can deal with that in real time. And that is coming very, very soon to the show. And uh, the more people that are in chat, the more shit of yours that we can address in real time. And all of a sudden, the show will go from an hour to two hours because we're like, oh, that's an awesome thing. Let's talk about your shit. Oh, let's get back to the show. Um, so please join us each and every Monday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, and uh, join in, join in the party. It's like a party without drinking and where you don't see your friends at the party, where really you're just drinking on your couch with your laptop. But right. it's almost as cool as a party if you have no friends. Wow, that's really sad. It's but, the saddest party you've ever gone to. But you still get drunk at the end anyway, so what do you care? 
Yeah. It's, it's better than the parties you don't get invited to. Exactly. At least except, you're at this party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just got to drink the beer. You pay for the beer. You pay to be by yourself. You know, it's really sad. But at least you're drunk at the end. Yes, that, that's the end game is what it's all about. Like it's all about said, end game. We discussed that already. End game content. Your end you're game leveling up strong. as you watch this. By the end, you're max level. You're dead drunk on the floor. It's fantastic. Yep. This is the raid. Yes. And, and you wiped. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, on that. Why don't we wrap this episode up? I am Derek D. Smooth Nolan. And I am Joel. Dude, I rock Albert. Rocking the dual green screens, motherfucker. And in case you didn't notice, we were synchro-fucking-nized.